Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to look at the next five theorems, starting with number six. They claim that the event A intersected with the union of events B and C should be equal to the intersection of A and B with the union of the intersection with A and C. Now we have some examples right there. We have event A, B, and C, and if we plug that into our theorem here, if the left side equals the right side, then that theorem should be correct. So let's try it. First of all, we have B union C, that means everything belonged to B and everything belonged to C combined. So we can combine that as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we take A intersected with that, so A would be equal to 1 and 2, so we're going to intersect that, okay? And that should equal A intersected with B, so what's common with A and B, that would be outcome 2 and union. A intersected with C, so what's common with A and C would be 1 and 2. And now simplifying that, here we're looking for the intersection of this and this, that would be 1 and 2. And that should equal the union of 2 and 1 and 2, which is also 1 and 2. And you can see that, oh, I had a little trouble drawing that. So you can see that they're equal, so we can say that this does indeed work. All right, let's try the next one. And so we'll have to delineate that so we don't get everything messed up. All right, so let's try this here. The event A, union B intersected with C, should equal the event A, union event B, intersected with event B, union event C. So let's see again what our examples of that is so. So here we have B intersected with C, so what's common with B and C would be 2 and 3. So this would be 2 and 3. And we take A, which is 1 and 2. And we take the union of that. And that should equal A union B. So what's common with A and B? That would be equal to 1, 2, and 3. And we take the intersection of B union C. That would be everything. B and C union would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now we can see that if we take this union this, we have 1, 2, and 3. equals the intersection between this and this would also be 1, 2, and 3. So you can see that theorem number 7 works as well. All right, now we have theorem number 8. A but not B, all right, what is A but not B? Everything in A but not belonging to B, the only thing we have left is 1. So this here, that would be 1, and that should equal A intersected with not B. All right, so let's try that. A is 1 and 2, and we're going to intersect that with not B. So everything that is not in B, again, the sample space here is assumed to be 1 through 6, so everything that's not in B would be 1, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 4, 5, and 6. And notice that the union, oh, not the union, but the, oh yeah, the intersection between these two, that would be everything that's common between these two, that only would be one, so therefore we can see that this becomes, ooh, that looks terrible. Here, let me try this again. One should equal one. And so therefore, again, we have proven that this is correct. Okay, now to number nine. So A is an element or a subset of C, and so let's see here. If A is a subset of C, A is indeed a subset of C because every outcome in A is also in C, so this is correct. If A is a subset of C, then they claim that not A, or I should say not C, is a part of not A. All right, let's see that. So not C, well, since everything, all the outcomes are in C, not C would be the empty set. And the empty set, does that become part of not A? Well, not A would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so then, yes, the empty set means, yes, empty set would be part of not A. So that's kind of an interesting concept. So let's try that. So not A, not A would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now we have C, not C would be the empty set. And is the empty set a part of that? And it turns out in probability that would indeed be correct. That is a correct statement. It's not like this is an outcome like, let's say, 1. We cannot say that 1 is a subset of 
three, four, five, and six, but the empty set is a subset because we're not introducing any outcomes that are not already in three, four, five, and six. So there we go, that works. And finally we have, so this is correct, so finally we have theorem number 10, and so here we have A union the empty set is equal to A. Does that make sense? Yes it does, because let's say we have A, and now we're adding that because remember when we have union that means you add everything together, you add the empty set, which means you're not adding any additional outcomes, and so therefore that must therefore be equal to A, which is 1 and 2 as outcomes. And here, the intersection of A and the empty set, that is equal to the empty set. And that makes sense because if you think about it this way, you have A, which is 1 and 2. Now you do, um, we do the intersection with the empty set. That means you can only take those outcomes that are common here and here. Since there's no outcomes here, then there's nothing in common, so therefore this must also equal the empty set. And so you can see those next five theorems, by using some examples, we can show that they work and that they are correct. And that's how we do that.